The Adam Carolla Show suits the winners of the COVID-19 pandemic. We're talking to you, Entercom Radio. You used the coronavirus panic and pandemic to cover your asses when firing Kevin Ryder and his entire morning show staff and effectively ending the legendary K-Rock. But hardly anyone will remember what you did because, well, it's not in the news anymore. So while we're all losers, you are the winner of COVID-19. Kevin is uh, up and Jimmy is up as well. Um, Kevin, thanks for uh, joining us and thanks for being a part of this. Absolutely. Uh, Jimmy, thank you as well. Well, I love the uh, John and Yoko approach you're taking to this. Looks like you're laying in bed. <laughs> the only place uh, I can get away from my children right now. I love the mini monologues, and you can watch those uh, every night on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and at YouTube as well. And uh, Kevin Ryder, well, he's got a mini monologue going on in his head every night <laughs> about the same time. Um, I thought it'd be fun to talk about, uh, take a little walk down memory lane, but we should also ask just how everyone's dealing with this on a daily basis. So Kevin, what's your day like? Uh, my day now is like uh, I sleep as long as I can, then I get up and watch TV, and then I sleep some more, and then I get up and watch TV. And Jimmy? Yeah. Um, it's the opposite of that. Actually, I'm... <laughs> It's weird. I thought this would be like kind of a break, but it turns out I have to, I'm the central hub for everyone at the show, sending me everything and figuring out what we're going to do. So uh, it's not, it's no fun. And then I got the kids and, uh, and all that stuff on top of it. So I've just really, the conclusion I've come to is that my, my uh, housekeeper and the children's teachers both need raises. <laughs> I have, I haven't, like people are measuring out their days at home by hours and days and weeks. I have this new unit of measurement, which is I'm getting up off my sofa. I'm walking into my bathroom with my shirt off and I'm measuring how long the red line that's just below my man titties is stretching around my rib cage. Cause all I'm doing is watching TV and eating and every I millimeter this grows, I get a little older. Yes. Hold on. I thought we weren't going to masturbate during this thing. I, now I have no choice. Wait, I have a question. Is Jimmy yes. in bed? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm in bed. I'm, I'm in bed. The kids are, have taken over the house. <laughs> uh, I thought it'd be fun to talk about some of those uh, old stories from uh, back in the day. But I also thought, uh, Kevin, you should give us exactly what happened uh, when they let you go after all those years at K-Rock. I, I know you called me a week and a half earlier and you said they canceled um, April Foolishness. And I said, why? And you said, they didn't tell me why. Hmm. No, they didn't tell me why, but then I found out as the days went on that they did it uh, because the ticket sales were poor, they said. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, we'd only been on sale for like nine days. So we still had almost a month to sell tickets. So we were like, all right, that doesn't make sense. Right. And then they said, oh, and they explained it to us in detail. Oh, because of the coronavirus, just like your little promo said, no one will notice. Just, mm -hmm. just, let's just not mention it. It'll go away. And we said, that makes no sense, but okay. So Did they, they let you go over the phone the night before, but said you could come in and say your sort of final piece on Friday? Yes. They, no, not on Friday. They asked me to, uh, it was Monday. We didn't work. Tuesday, they asked me to come in by myself with um, beer mug. So we went in and did the show by myself. And then Tuesday, as soon as I got home at 1030, they called and said, oh, by the way, you're fired. And um, I can't remember what else they said. Something about they hope to keep me in the family and maybe I can do something. So I didn't fully understand that. And then they said, do you want to say goodbye? And I said, oh, when? Friday? And they said, no, tomorrow, meaning Wednesday. So basically then I was like, all right, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to go quietly, whatever. It sucks, but I've had a good run. And then I found out Tuesday night that they had fired everyone, including all of our staff and the part-timers and everybody else. And then I just went crazy. I just lost my mind. Well, you're, it's, yeah. it was incredibly eloquent, by the way, your, your goodbye speech. I mean, I, I got to be honest. I, I wrote it out because I'm not known for eloquence. 
<laughs> you mean for Kevin, it was eloquent, right? Yes. Oh, <laughs> didn't I say that? Uh, it was, it was you're implied. Just thinking it. Adam, we can't hear your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I figured that was an assumption, yes. So, uh, Jimmy, uh, you show up. I, my mind is blown that you showed up at K-Rock and Kevin and Bean a mere, mere months before I showed up. Is that correct? Um, it was about, a, it was a, it maybe like eight months or something what, like that, I think. What was it your was first day? January of a night, it was a week after the earthquake. It was the end of January, 1994. So I showed up probably end of April, beginning of May. 94. Yeah. No, it was a month after the year. It was February now that I think of it. Yeah. So yeah. we, I mean, you, you were just there two months before me. Yeah, so, I guess so. I guess that's right. Yeah. I, that's, I, that's I thought, all the time it takes Jimmy to get into a fight with somebody and need a trainer. <laughs> <laughs> I thought of Jimmy as a wily veteran who'd been there, you know, a seasoned journeyman <laughs> who'd been there. He'd been there nine weeks before I got <laughs> there. Yeah. yeah. But I was, I was seasoned in a journeyman at the nine other radio stations I got fired at. <laughs> Kevin, what was your first impression of uh, Jimmy when he showed up to the job? I mean, I love Jimmy. And if I remember correctly, we had talked to him before. But we had yeah. no idea the day we walked in, no idea that Jimmy was sitting in a conference room. We were like, oh, hey, I guess you're working with us now. All right, great. I mean, he's <laughs> funny, seemed funny. Didn't know that much about him, but liked him. And we were like, all right, let's go. Yeah, you got, yeah, it, it was weird. Everything at K-Rock is weird. But I just want to say, before we get into this, the, the positive portion, which, of course, it should, we should focus on that. The fact that these guys enter com. Kevin, give me some names here. Who are the, who are the, who are the bad guys here on this, in this deal? I mean, you want the bad guys at K-Rock or the bad guys above them? Whatever, whoever, anyone who thought it was a good idea to fire board ops. I mean, a board op is someone that operates the board at the radio station. That person is required. You can't, it, it, you have to have someone in that spot. The idea that they fired these, you know, low paid people just as this horrible plague descends upon us is just, it's just, uh, I mean, that is horrible. And they, should, I hope. I hope this that they have enough integrity that they are in sh ashamed of themselves. I want to say quickly, it's despicable. Brian, give me a call after we wrap. No, just, real quick. just real quick. Sorry. Go ahead, Kevin. I just, I didn't want to write that down. Go ahead. <laughs> um, no, what happened was um, as soon as I saw that everybody was let go, I called my boss back who had just fired me. And I said, this, his name is Mike Kaplan. And I said, dude, um, why would you be firing Destiny? We hired her like two months ago. She's probably the best board op you'll have. You don't need any more board ops. Like, this doesn't make any sense to me at all. And this is when he still took my phone call. And he said, well, it just needed to be done. And I said, why? And he said, just did. Yeah, no explanation. No. Nope. Wow. So, Kevin, would well, you like to call out any, any names <laughs> we should publicly shame? I mean, there's Mike Clapp, Kaplan, the program director, and there's Jeff Satterman, the general manager. But I don't know that I assume – Everybody in Philadelphia at the intercom sort of knew about it. Seems like a, the program director had come in three weeks before he fired us all. That seems like a pretty quick move if he didn't have any backing. But I don't really know. I hope when the day comes, and I hope that it's soon, that Jeff Fetterman and Mike Kaplan are, are eliminated <laughs> from that horrible company, that they get a similar treatment. And, so, and then they'll be like, oh, dude, yeah, man, they did it to me. And be like, yeah, no, no, <laughs> they didn't do a deal. You did a deal. <laughs> Did, yeah, bags. Uh, you know, radio. I mean, it can go. I no love. Other by way the way, Adam. Radio, right? You know, Adam. You know those guys. You know these radio guys are are. I I just want to give them a little shout out because I know Jeff and this Mike Kaplan are watching right now, and I just want you to know that you're a couple of scumbags. And Jeff, I I've known Jeff Fetterman for many years, and um, I'm very disappointed in him. But Jimmy, my problem, honestly, is of course with them. But you know, like every radio station is run that way. You get fired. That's fine, but you get fired over the phone after thirty-one years. You, I, I mean, mean, yeah, that's exceptional. Sure, <laughs> you know. I mean, it's not like you're, you know, you've. I mean, it's crazy. It's not like you're like some loose cannon that 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 they have to, you know, throw you out of the building. That they they had guys waiting to escort you out of the building. I mean, that's, that's an insanity. 
Yeah, you know what was funny is there were there were three of them, and I didn't really look, but there were three guys there, and I was trying to tweet and get my stuff ready to go, and one of them said, we're here to escort you out, and I laughed, and I just thought, that's funny, like somebody would escort me out, and then they go, no, no, we're serious, and I looked up, and it was one guy that I know and I loved, um, and he said, yeah, no, honestly, we have to escort you out, wow. so, so then he sort of walked with me, and I was like, dude, I really appreciate you. It's been great working with you. You're one of my favorites. He said, you're one of my favorites, and then he followed me out to the door, and I was like, you literally have to watch the door close behind me, don't you? And he said, yes, I do. And I wow. said, in a, in a strange way, that's really a perfect way for my career at K-Rock to end. <laughs> yeah. I want to say this. Kevin, I've been escorted out of a number of buildings. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll catch up, Jimmy. Give me some time. <laughs> I've been with male escorts, but I think that's different than yeah. what you fellas are talking <laughs> about. Three at a time, too, though, right? Fellas and three at a time, but <laughs> yeah. it was different. Um, so do you remember... So obviously, the thing I'm interested in getting getting is, I like I remember first seeing Jimmy, and when I first met Jimmy, and I remember when I first met Kevin and Bean as well. But I'm trying to make sure it's it's the same in their mind's eye. So when I met you, Jimmy, it was on the ninth floor of the old K Rock building in Burbank, and in my recollection, you were coming around the back hallway where the back door was, where you. Yes. Had the key card. Is that is that yes. seem correct? Yeah. Somebody uh, somebody told me that there was a guy out there who wanted to wanted to talk to us, and so I went out there. And it let was me just key. say this. Let me just say this. Why would Jimmy go outside if he just says there's a guy out there that wants to talk to us? <laughs> you know, we didn't exactly run a tight ship <laughs> at that time. <laughs> I, 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 do you remember who that guy was or what his business was in the building? Oh, he was, I think he was just, um, uh, yeah. you know, one of the engineers or something like that who was, who was there working or something. It was, it was just, there was a knock on the door. Somebody was headed out to the bathroom and, uh, they, and somebody just told me, you know, I, I would, I would, that's the sort of thing I would do. I'd go and deal with people outside the studio. Ke Kevin. Yes. What is your plan moving forward? A lot of people are asking me that. I mean, I did just get fired Tuesday. So <laughs> honestly, after 31 years, I really don't know. I mean, I have some ideas of things that I'd like to try, but I feel like I owe myself, I don't know, a couple of weeks to sit around and not do anything and sort of figure out what I want to do. Sleep in. Can I'll, you... probably, I'll probably race Formula One. How about that, Adam? <laughs> oh, F1. I was just watching that special on Netflix last night. Yeah, I was just I kidding. I'm not... I'm not oh, race not all. oh, you're going to do Formula Atlantic hey, or Formula Ford? <laughs> Kevin, have you talked to Bean about this? I have. He's been, yeah, we've been texting back and forth. He's like, what is going on? Oh, you've been texting, but no actual, no conversations with Bean. I mean, Bean hasn't had a conversation with me <laughs> off the air in, in 20 years. <laughs> They've That's talked why I, enough. Why I, are you, is there any possibility you might move to London to be with Bean? <laughs> no, again? no. No, I'm very happy in Southern California. I don't have any interest in moving to London. Is that room that you're in right now a place where cats live? Uh, no, it isn't. It is not? Okay, because it looks like a big scratching post. <laughs> oh, I don't know that guy in bedroom should be making fun of me. <laughs> no, no, yes, guy That's in bedroom. Fire. It's a human bedroom. Kevin. Hey, let's, yes. let's tell a couple more stories yes. about Kevin. and all. No, I mean, they don't have to be about me. No, they should be about you. Why are we talking about Adam? And uh, this is your special day because we right. got a big special show, and 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 you got nothing, yeah. right? Yeah, All nothing. Right. So. Uh, Jimmy, that's not true. I got a phone call. <laughs> you did get a phone call, yeah, from those Off motherfuckers. Yep. Those motherfuckers. So, so but, um, Jimmy, but Jimmy, in all honesty, does that surprise you at all? Yes, it does. It does, does it really? Me. I, I mean, I guess I haven't, I haven't been there, uh, you know, in a while. And I know that, um, you know, with Lisa and Ralph, things were handled very badly, but um, it still surprises me. I mean, just the, just knowing that there's going to be a, just, you know what, here's the thing. If you're in, if you're a program director or a general manager of a radio station, you should be at the level that you know that the way you do things is just as important as what you do. And firing someone who has been, uh, a, 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 you know, a, a great um, everything for you 
not just successful, reliable, easy to deal with, kind of, to, to fire someone in that cold way indicates a lack of common sense. It, it indicates that perhaps they are not up to the job of running what, what is one of the greatest radio stations of all time. And, um, and Look, I'm sure that will prove it. I just want to say this again, that um, I was not as angry for myself as I was people who are working by the hour that are going to have to go out yeah. now when all businesses are closing down and look for jobs. That's what set me off. I, I, I strangely made peace with it. I was like, well, that is a really crappy way to handle things. But what about the people that are hour to hour and they had no reason to fire them? It made no sense to me. And that's when I got completely angry. And I just thought, look, I made a decent amount of money. I had a good living. I'm not the one I'm worried about. Those people are literally out on their asses for no reason. And I don't get that. Um, Kevin. Yes. Um, do you, are you set up financially so that if you wanted to retire, you could? Um, you know, I'm, I probably sh should work for a while, but I'm, I'm well along that path. And that's why it sort of doesn't, I'm not scared at this point. I'm sort of looking back and I was like, look, what an unbelievable career I had for 31 years. And sure, it ended in a crash landing. But had I known that, I still would have signed up at the beginning and done it because it was crazy fun. But I have a different situation than everybody else that was fired. Well, also, it's not only that you had an amazing 31-year career or 30 plus, 30 plus a bunch of months at uh, K-Rock, but it'll, you will never capture that time again mm -hmm. where everyone is tuned into the same radio station driving into work you know the it's it's almost in 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 a weird way it's like being on johnny carson as a comedian in the 70s or something like people are spread out they're they got their earbuds in they're listening to a million different voices and you were not only there for an amazing period of time but probably the best window I mean, it's a pretty big window. It's like a sliding door, 30, 30 years. But you're also there in a time that we can never recreate, really, in history. That yeah, I mean, won't I mean that's anymore. true. And I've been thinking about what we created and what we went through and what all of the experiences we had in Southern California. And it really made me think, I'm sort of sad that there's nothing like that anymore. And with the way society is all split up and music streaming and everything else and I don't know that it ever will be again. And so, yeah, I'm really grateful for what happened, but I'm also a little bit sad that it's not possible anymore. Jimmy, do you have any stories, any uh, Kevin stories you'd like to share with us? Oh, yeah. You know, one of, the best, <laughs> one of the best times we ever had was Kevin and I decided, I don't know, maybe three days before the Olympics when they were in Atlanta that we, were go we wanted to go to the Olympics and broadcast <laughs> And all the hotels were sold out. And of course, even at that time, you know, K-Rock, they were very cheap. You know, never, not, no money was ever given for anything. So we decide that we're going to stay at a random person's house. We get the phone book and we start calling people in Atlanta. And we reach this old man named Charlie Brown. We're looking up names like Charlie <laughs> Brown. This is 96, <laughs> right? 1996, yeah. Yeah, well, 96, yeah, he was old. I don't, yeah, uh, he, was, he was probably- No, no, it was 1996 the, and the he year. was 96. And he was 96. I know, I know, right, yeah. So, Richard um, Jewell, right. Yeah, so no. Richard, yeah this is, that happened the day, the, the, the day before we, uh, we headed to Atlanta. So we call this guy, we go in the white pages and we look up this guy, Charlie Brown, and we ask if we can stay in his apartment. He's like in a senior living apartment or something. He <laughs> says yes. So Kevin and I get on a plane and go to Atlanta where there are no hotel rooms to speak of, expecting to stay in this man's apartment. And we ring the, the we ring on his building and in, uh, in the intercom and he will, and no one's answering. And we have like his daughter's phone number and we call his daughter. We have to go to a pay phone to do it or something. And, and we call his daughter and uh, she's like, yeah, no, he, my dad, he's, he's old. You're not staying at his house. <laughs> And Kevin was so mad. Kevin's like, he told us we could stay here. <laughs> and he is arguing with this woman on the phone. 
Jimmy, what would make us think, yes, this is a good plan. This old man will let us stay with him. I, what, would, what would be good about staying with him in the first place in some apartment? So, we, you know he didn't have a guest room there. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, We'd have to share so, a bed with him, with Charles. So, Kevin, somehow, I don't Charles. even remember how you figured this out, but you somehow wrangled it so we were able to stay in some rich person's house. We rented a room in the house of the guy. This guy owned the house Coca-Cola was invented in. He showed us the, he took us in the basement and showed us the like table and vault where the guy, Dr. Pemberton invented Coca-Cola. I mean, it was crazy. And do you remember what happened on the way, on the way when he picked us, uh, when he picked us up, uh, Kevin? Oh yeah. Oh, that was he the sweetest thing in the world. He picks us up. We never heard of Krispy Kreme donuts. And he starts mm. talking about Krispy. He's like, yeah, and in the morning, uh, you know, I'll get you guys some donuts. And we're driving by Krispy Kreme, and the light comes on, the, uh, you know, fresh donuts light. And this, the guy goes, maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll just pull over right now and get them, uh, get them right now. And so we go into the – and you can tell this guy has got a, a, a donut problem. <laughs> we sit down, and he goes, don't tell my wife. Do not tell my wife. <laughs> we're headed out to dinner. Please, we, the three of us sit there and we polish off a dozen donuts and we buy two more boxes of donuts to bring home. And then we get to the house and his wife just knows, like we have the donuts and his wife looks at him and she's like, did you guys stop and eat donuts? And he goes, no. And she turns to us. She's like, did you guys stop and eat donuts? And we had to lie, but we weren't very convincing. <laughs> well, we and didn't know he was going to literally get in trouble from his wife. We had no idea. The guy was in trouble by his wife. It was, it was completely crazy. It was a crazy trip, the whole thing from beginning to end. And then we spent the rest of the trip, instead of going to the Olympics, in the parking lot of Richard Jewell, in his parking lot of this guy who was accused falsely of, of bombing the Olympics. And um, we ordered him a pizza um, in front of the media, a, a, a delivery guy pulled up in front of his house, in front of the, all the world media. Uh, that was a good one. I, I, were, I have vague recollections of that because you guys were broadcasting all through that, right? Like Bean yes. was just back in Burbank, right? Yeah, Bean didn't want to go with us. What? <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> hey, Kevin, I have a couple of thoughts as I was, Jimmy was talking. I was writing down a couple of just random thoughts that I've never, I haven't had in 20 years. Yes, sir. And a couple of things. First, I feel bad for outing the donut guy now <laughs> on this show, but he <laughs> passed in 03, so we don't have to worry about him. <laughs> um, I, these are thoughts of, do you remember this? Okay. I remember when we were all driving from Seattle into Vancouver to interview the folks from the X-Files. From the X-Files, yeah. And you got a speeding ticket in the rental car. I wouldn't have gotten a speeding ticket. Oh, then who was I'm driving? a law-abiding citizen. Oh, you got the speeding ticket. <laughs> okay. We got, yeah. we got pulled over on the way. I don't know if you remember that, Jimmy. We got pulled over on the way to uh, Vancouver from Seattle. Here's a random one. Me, you, and Jimmy went to see a Lakers game on some weeknight on a Wednesday night. You drove. I think we all met up, like, maybe at the station or something and drove to see a, a nighttime Lakers game, probably at the Forum. Then at some point in halftime, they had the T-shirt cannon, and they're firing the T-shirt cannon up into the upper deck. I jumped up and snatched it out of the air made a nice catch like you would with a foul ball at a ball game had it but i'd only known you for about five or six weeks and i thought give it to kevin so you can ingratiate yourself with him so he'll have you back on the show and i handed you the t-shirt did you you felt sorry for me didn't you i felt like Whatever this T-shirt is worth, $9, you could get a lot more than $9 of goodwill with the guy whose name is on the morning show if you hand it to him. No, you felt like there was a little kid with a ball glove, <laughs> and you reached right in front of him and grabbed it, and you were like, oh, I look bad now. I should give the little kid the ball. But you do remember getting that T-shirt at that I game? Do, yes. Because <laughs> it must have been shortly after we'd met. I hadn't, I don't think I, I knew you very well then. I remember we all piled into your Lexus 
but it was only like a two seater with like kind of a boot in the back. And we just, we just drove it all the way out to the I remember forum. Kevin, Kevin was the first guy who had any money really that I knew. And Kevin would drive around with his um, top down and the air conditioning on. And I remember thinking, oh my God, who has this kind of money that they could drive around blasting the air into into the world jimmy honestly though you know for a fact that had i had that same car and the top down and no money i would have done the same thing <laughs> yeah that's true yeah. it's just bad judgment oh, <laughs> how long was frank murphy your producer there how many years did he cover from what year to what year that's a great question i'm gonna say 90 i'm gonna be wrong but i'm gonna say 91 to 94 or 5 do you guys remember that? Oh, you know, he must have gone later than four or five because no, no. he possible, was there yeah. for a little yeah. while while I it's was possible, there. It's possible, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was there. Yeah. He was there for uh, a couple of years after, when, after I got there. So Jimmy, I, do you remember Frank and his weird, like, germaphobic thing? I'm not even sure it was germaphobic, but if he had the newspaper sitting on his desk and we opened up the top page to look at not page two he's like it's ruined throwing it out it's ruined <laughs> why would you do that he also if you threw a gum wrapper and i'm and not even the inside part the the outside wrapper of the gum into his trash he practically would hold his nose and pick up the trash can and walk it outside to the hall to throw it away no food trash was allowed in his trash can and he would yell no food trash and we're like it's a rapper what are you talking about he had he rules was out of his mind. and he, had he a lot broke of his rules you're in trouble i remember jimmy getting screamed at by his wife uh when you he had broken his arm running down the ramp to get into the underground parking um he had a he had a cast on his arm, but he drove an automatic, and, mm -hmm. and we couldn't figure out why he couldn't just get up in the morning and drive in. His wife had to get up and drive him in. Jimmy, you were being pretty relentless about him and the broken arm and something of that nature, and at some point, I think she just went nuts on you. Does that sound she, she about right? Nuts. It was on all of us, really. She got it. She grabbed the phone from him, and she said, will you let him take care of his arm, please? <laughs> I think Look, you guys used let, to play that drop a lot. Let me add something to that is that yeah. Frank tripped, broke his arm. I believe it was his left arm. He did have an automatic. And not only did he have his wife get up for a full month to take him to work, but they had to get the kids up and oh. put them in the car as well and drive him to work. And this is at 5 o'clock in the morning. That's yes. Brutal. For a month. Because <laughs> Frank yeah. couldn't drive. And she would also bathe him as well. <laughs> I do remember the bathing part as well. I, re I remember it was probably behind Frank's desk or next to it where Jimmy took the piece of uh, Canadian bacon and put it up with the thumbtack for one year before he consumed yeah. it. Can you verify that, Kevin, how that yes. went? Exactly? Yeah, he put that up and he said, what? And he said, for some reason, I don't know why this popped into his head, one year from now, I'm going to eat that. And we were like, Here's all right, happened. whatever. Bean but got, we got, Bean got an egg McMuffin. And it had bacon on it, and Bean is a vegetarian. So he pulled that weird circular piece of McDonald's bacon off his sandwich and just set it on the side. And I just picked it up, and, um, and I, had, I don't know why I had a hammer and a nail, but I, I nailed it to the wall. And I said, one year from today, I will eat, if I'm still here, I will eat that bacon. Why would you say that? Like, what makes a person think that way? I don't know. I like to pull tricks on myself sometimes. <laughs> and then by the way, later, by the way when a year later's game, Jimmy pulled it off the wall and ate it. One year I later, probably it. wrote the date under it on a post-it or something, something like that. That's ate right. it one year later. Um, yep. I remember in that same office, you getting choked out by Booger Man. That's something yes. that's very vivid <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> That I was another that one of those things that like things happen and they happen quickly. And even if you're paying attention, it's like, okay, I don't even know what's going on right now, but Jimmy's up against the wall and a guy named Boogerman who lives in his van has his hands around Jimmy's neck and maybe I should do something, but I'm so stunned. I'm not able to move. It was yes. awesome. And nobody was, was able to move. It's amazing. No. And um, 
do you remember when Screech and his friend came into the show? I do. <laughs> and I had to physically throw them out, and I well, dragged them down the hall and it was pushed one them out into the hall. It was one at a time. They came in and they were making like little sounds, like little inside yeah, sounds to each other. And we kicked out Screech's friend and then Screech kept doing it. And we were like, dude, honestly, like, and Jimmy ended up having to drag him out. <laughs> Imagine Adam, Jimmy being our security. Hmm. Adam, do you remember when we got separated and we were no longer allowed to be in the studio at the same time, like children? Yes, I remember yes. that. I remember that clearly. I remember as I, sort of do you remember what we did <laughs> no tell me well um we had i don't know i don't remember where it was but it was some promotion we met an attractive young couple who mm -hmm. had told us they were interested in um getting into the uh pornographic film industry and mm -hmm. so adam and i wrote a script for them oh um, that's right act out over the phone and um, and we faxed it to them. <laughs> and we were and then we were giving them direction, and it was filthy, you know. <laughs> yes, I now and, remember uh, that. Yeah, and then at the at the end of the show, uh, Trip, the general manager, said that we're no longer allowed to be in there at the same time. <laughs> like that would solve anything. And by the way, the other thing is that was in the nineties. And Howard Stern worked for our company and the company was obsessed with him and we could do almost anything we wanted. Nobody cared. And yet somehow Jimmy and Adam got in trouble. <laughs> I know, a lot of times. Yeah. I, I remember as I walk, I remember like walking through the hallway with the phone, phone banks on the right as you come in from the back door of the vending machine on the left. And then Frank Murphy's office being sort of straight ahead. And then Jimmy having this little alcove with the tractor feed and the printer and the computer and just banging out sports reports. I always remember being really impressed by this, like how you just bang them out, rip them off the tractor feed and run in seconds, like while your theme song was being played and just mow, mow right through two pages of tightly spaced dialogue without even, hicc without even a hiccup. To me, that was, for a guy who couldn't read or spell or type, that was the most impressive thing I'd ever seen. And I'd never seen anyone do it because I hung out with Ray and Chris and guys who would throw shit in my ear. I'd never, I'd never seen it done. How many, did you do two of those an hour? Yeah, more? two an hour. Six a morning, two an hour. How long, I mean, it seems like those were two or three pages sometimes. Yeah, they were about three pages long usually. And you would literally just bang them bang them out and, and print we, them right then there we do all the other stuff in between you know yeah i mean especially when it came around to producing the morning uh sorry producing the christmas album and all the theme songs or even just stuff. calling calling in and doing the dumb characters and you know and you know with doing uh mr bertram stuff and it, all that it, stuff it was but it adam was you know exactly adam you knew exactly what that's like because once you started with us we were just flying by the seat of our pants and look at that and you were doing the same thing you just sort of make it up as you go and and whoever's good at it jimmy happened to be good at it you happened to be good at it stood out but i the reason i was more impressed with jimmy is i was writing beats down on a on a pad like just the beats you know and the fact that he could write it all out and read it that fast and didn't sound like it was scripted to me, that was insanely impressive to me. Well, I had, to, uh, you know, one thing I can't remember is scores and numbers and stuff like that. So I had to have all that information there. In That's front not of important me. for a sports report. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, so I remember I had a, a, another very clear thought, but I, I want Jimmy to corroborate it or, or tell me what his version of it was. Uh, his two piece of, of advice is don't drive the van you'll become the van driver if you drive the van i want to drive the van at some point and then another point he told me you got to learn to edit by cutting tape and and taping it together literally putting it on your thigh using the razor blade and all that you'll be very valuable or more valuable if you can learn this and i remember thinking how long can that go on <laughs> and that's the only time I ignored Jimmy's advice back then. I was just like, we got it. We got to move forward. The computer's going to replace us. But Jimmy, you cut a lot of tape physically, right? 
Yeah, I mean, for the first, like, eight years of my radio career, when you made an edit, you had a big, we called a pancake of reel-to-reel tape, and you had a razor blade and this, this special tape, and you'd make the edit, and you put the little piece of tape you cut out on your knee in case you had to put it back, in case you screwed the edit up, you know? And that's just how you did it. And I just, I remember when we got that digital technology, I, I felt like, so much of my life had been wasted, you know, it's, it was really like, it was disheartening. I was like, oh, okay, now this is how it is, I guess. Did Jimmy, you, you should have asked Adam. He apparently saw that coming. <laughs> well, yeah, there was I, a machine. We had one, but John yeah. Frost was always on it. He was the only yeah. one allowed to use it. Yeah. He was doing the important stuff. We were just <laughs> messing around. Does anyone yeah. know where anybody is today? Does anyone know where Frank is, where John Frost is, or, uh, you know, Booger Man, or any? I know where Frank people? is. Frank does a morning show in, in uh, what, like North Carolina, I think? Uh, I thought um, it was Tennessee, but I'm not positive. You're probably right. Um, and, um, uh, oh, um, yeah, no, I I don't have Frank's John, information. John Frost does a lot of imaging yes. work in LA. Yes, does. A ton of it. Think, yeah. Yeah, I think he did like Premier Radio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those guys. Right. John Frost still might be the most talented person I've ever worked with um, at, at any job. I, oh yeah. I've ever had. He used to do the whole detective thing. Remember. <laughs> The he was whole, the, all, the guy who did all those little world famous K Rock, you know, all that stuff, the, all those funny little jingles, and they were always good. Every, you never heard one and thought, oh, that sucked. He they was were always he, good. He was great, but he also did, Kevin, what was the detective he would do from way back in the day? He'd do the voice, he had his like Asian sidekick character. Yeah, the, new, the was, new detective. That was cool to have an Asian called sidekick the, character. Yeah, yeah it, was right. the, it was the new detective. Yes, the new yes. detective, yeah. He, was, he, would do, he would do all the sound effects. He would do all of the voices. Like, remember when you walked in and you saw Jimmy writing out his sports and coming and do that? He would do that on a whole nother level with production yeah. and sound effects and all kinds of special effects stuff. And he would put it all together so that it made complete sense. And it was a miracle. Yeah, I know. That guy is, uh, I don't know. I feel like he's like, it's like, when you go to Benny Hanna and you see the chef and you go, God, that guy's incredible. And then you yep. leave and you for, and he never gets the credit he's due. He, he's, John Frost is an he, amazing talent. I think he's been working and is still working, producing stuff for radio stations. I mean, he's oh, still God. an amazing talent. I just looked I him up. He's actually working at a Benny Hanna's. Oh my God. Oh, he does the sad. onion volcano. No, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, should we uh, give everyone a plug and, uh, and, you know, make a uh, vow to do this uh, once a year and get keep caught up with everyone so we don't lose track of each other like uh, Michael the maintenance man. Do we have to wait until I get fired from another job? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we can, uh, we can do this as I mean, much as If, if much that's as what we we're want. waiting for, I could probably make that happen. <laughs> I will. Uh, I will be very curious uh, where you where you go and and who's talking to you and uh, how that's going to shake out. So keep us keep us uh, posted. It's sort of weird, Adam. I got to be honest. I'll just say this quickly. It's sort of weird because a lot of people are contacting me and a lot of people want to know what I'm going to do. And honestly, I'm just trying to get my feet underneath me, and I have zero idea what I'm going to do. But I feel like I've got a little bit time to figure it out so i'm very grateful for that but i would also like to say before we're finished that all of the little people on our show all the people who are getting paid hour to hour to hour they're not little they're normal sized humans they um <laughs> they're the ones that are really going to have a difficult time right now and that still is what angers me about what happened yeah uh, jimmy when do you go back or do you know or do you have any idea I, we don't know we don't know every night i'm doing a little monologue thing and uh and uh, we'll just wait till it's it's uh, safe to gather, I guess. Uh, mini monologues, and you can find it at Facebook. And where else can we find them? I don't have the paper. Uh, it, YouTube but... mostly. YouTube is kind of the main home of those things. Sorry, my TV just went on mysteriously. <laughs> <laughs> These are the many pitfalls of. <laughs> All right, Jimmy. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, thanks for getting us all caught up and taking that walk down memory lane. We'll do it soon. You bet. Yeah. Thank you, Adam. Thanks, guys. Bye, Kev. Uh, Bye, guys. Bye-bye.